This morning's reading is Acts 3 verses 1 to 10. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking, jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognised him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Heavenly Father, we lift Ian to you and thank you for his gifting in leading the Restore family at this difficult and unprecedented times. May you fill him with your Holy Spirit and anoint him in a powerful way as he brings your word to us. May our hearts be open, softened and receptive to your truths as he speaks them to us today. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome once more to the Restore Living Room. I gather there's a problem today with YouTube. We're working as hard as we can to uh, get all the technology to work on a Sunday morning. Uh, the stream is working fine on the Restore website. So if you want to go to www.restorecc.org.uk, uh, there in the top right hand corner, there's an opportunity to live stream and uh, just click on that and it will go live. Uh, we'll try and sort out YouTube if we can, uh, Restore versus YouTube. Not quite sure who's going to win out of that but we'll try and get those issues sorted so that we'll all be able to connect on as many platforms as possible. Um, at the moment we're doing on a Sunday morning a series that we've called House to House. We're nearly at the end of it but what we felt God say was in this season where we can't physically gather we had a sense that the Holy Spirit was wanting to do something in our lives to help us to deepen our personal and family uh, and individual uh, relationship with Jesus and so we've been looking at the early church because if you read through the story in the book of Acts what you find with the early church is not only did God work when they gathered together in the temple but also God worked really really powerfully when they met together in one another's homes and indeed in their own home and what we've been praying for this season is that God will continue to work and work powerfully in our lives and work powerfully while we're uh, in lockdown in our own individual homes and our verse that we've been using as a theme for this is from Acts chapter 2 verse 42 and it uh, says says this it says uh, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer and so over the last few weeks we've been looking at those four elements but actually the very next verse verse 43 which is the verse that we want to go on to today it says everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And what I love about the early church is this, that sense of God working deeply in uh, individuals' lives and in their own homes. But at the same time, there's an outbreak of the power of God that is bringing life transformation. And uh, Reinhardt referenced it at the uh, beginning. Did you recognize Reinhardt in his new lockdown haircut? It's quite extreme, isn't it? Once you get used to it, it looks really, really great. But it is a bit of a shock the first time you see it. Um, so uh, Reynard referenced the fact that we've seen some healings. In fact, over this last week, uh, I've uh, received four testimonies of people who've been supernaturally healed by God. And two weeks ago today, we looked at the story of Bartimaeus. It was a blind man who had an encounter with Jesus. And in that encounter moment with Jesus, his eyesight was totally restored. Now, there was one person who was uh, watching the live stream. And when we prayed at the end, we prayed for anyone with eye issues. And they had an eye issue, and it was instantly healed. And there's someone else who was watching. And over the course of this week, uh, they developed an eye issue as well. And so as well as getting medication, uh, they decided they'd pray. And when they prayed, God miraculously healed 
their eyes as well. So we, uh, lo- we live with and we worship a God who is supernatural. And uh, maybe today you've tuned in and you've got some issue that you would love God to help with. Maybe you've got a physical issue and you would love for God to heal. Well, the good news is that Jesus is still in the business of healing. And so we're going to have an opportunity a little bit later to be able to pray for anyone who's sick. And uh, and so I want to encourage you to be ready for that and to engage with God when we get to that point in the service. We're also going to try something brand new this morning. We're going to try some live interaction. So I have at the front here, I've got an iPad, and uh, the iPad is on the uh, Restore live stream. So whatever you're posting on the live stream, I'm able to read. That's one of the reasons I knew that YouTube uh, wasn't working this morning. So you can put all your nice compliments about how fit and healthy I'm looking and what a great talk it is. Um, But also, jokes aside, uh, we're going to be looking at a passage from the Bible this morning. It's actually the first recorded miracle in the book of Acts. Uh, The firsts in uh, the Bible, the first stories, uh, the first references to things are often quite significant. And so I believe the first recorded miracle in the life of the early church is significant. So we're going to look at that in a moment. But we're going to take the framework that I also talked about two weeks ago. And we're talking about how we can get into the word of God. And I talked about that uh, one of the helpful tools for that is a tool called the Discovery Bible um, study. And the Discovery Bible study works on this basis. You read a passage from the Bible, and then you simply ask three questions. Number one, what does this passage tell me about Jesus? Number two, what does this passage tell me about people and or myself? And number three, what do I need to do as a response? And so what we're going to do this morning is we're going to take that passage that uh, Duncan read so beautifully for us this morning, and we're going to look at it uh, together, but I'm going to ask those questions. And already you might have an answer to some of those questions. And as we work through and look through the passage this morning, I want you, if you get an answer, to write it on the chat stream, and we're going to try and interact. And so actually you'll be able to shape my preach. I've got a couple of things prepared um, that I uh, will share as we look through the story, but actually you can help me and you can help us raise the quality of the preaching on a Sunday morning by feeding your answers onto the chat stream uh, on the website and I'll be able to look at them and I'll be making reference to them as we go along. So now you're sitting at home, you're thinking, I wish I'd paid more attention to the story if if I'm going to be helping you with a preach. Well, the good news is I'm going to give you an opportunity to be reminded of the story. So in a moment, we're going to bring the story. It's called The Healing of the Beautiful Gate. We're going to bring the passage up onto the TV screen, uh, onto the computer screen. And I want to encourage you. I'm going to read it, but why don't we all read it out together? In fact, if you're at home in your uh, lounge, maybe you want to stand up um, just to uh, exert yourself and engage more and let's read the passage together then we'll think about it a little bit and then uh, we'll work through the three questions uh, that I referenced earlier so let's look at Acts chapter 3 we're going to read it it's verses 1 through to 10 one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. That's an amazing story, isn't it? Wonderful story of supernatural healing. And as we did a couple of uh, weeks ago, I'm just going to give us an opportunity to have a few minutes just to unpack some of the details of the story, just to help us get inside it. And then we'll look at those three questions. What does the story tell me about Jesus? What does the story tell me about me? And how do I need to respond today to God? 
So a couple of things about the story to begin with. Let's think about the major characters in the story. And there's three main characters in the story. There's Peter and uh, John. And then there's the lame man. And we don't uh, learn his name, but what we do know about him is he was uh, lame since birth. So this guy had never walked. So it's not like he had a sprained ankle or uh, he had a little bit of a pain in his, in his uh, little toe and he hobbled a little bit. This guy had never, ever walked. In fact, we're told that his friends had to carry him to the temple each day. And so this is an amazing, incredible miracle that when uh, Jesus works in an instant, this guy suddenly can not just walk, but uh, if you notice in the story, he leaps and dances as he walks into the temple. So uh, one of the things we know from this story is it's, it's an incredible supernatural miracle. Uh, we see that the miracle is performed by uh, Peter and John. Now, if you uh, know uh, your background in the Gospels, you know that uh, when Jesus gathered the disciples together, he gathered 12 of them, but there's a number of instances where he takes three of them in particular, Peter, James, and John, into special moments with Jesus. Uh, one of those would be the Mount of Transfiguration. Another one would be where he uh, heals uh, Jairus's daughter and raises her from the dead. Uh, in those moments, it feels like Jesus is particularly preparing them for a significant role in the life of the early church. And actually, Peter and James and John end up being the first leaders of the early church. And so the first recorded miracle in the book of Acts is by those people who were mentored, who were trained, who were developed by Jesus. And they're now doing the same works that Jesus did. The second thing to note about the story is the story happens at a particular gate in the temple. Now, if we bring up the diagram, and the temple was laid out in a particular way in Jerusalem, and it was laid out into different sections. And the beautiful gate was the point, the entry point that the Israelites could go into. Now, if you weren't an Israelite, you weren't able to actually enter the temple, so you'd have to be on the outer courts. So if you were an Israelite, you could come through the beautiful gate into what was the court of the women, and then the men could go further into the court of Israel, and then the priests could go even further into the holy place and once a year the high priest could go into the very holy of holies but what you see from that diagram is that the temple was sectioned off and actually someone who was uh, crippled who was lame from birth they weren't allowed into the temple at all and so the reason that he used to beg at the beautiful gate was because uh, that was as far as he was able to come it was as close to God as he was able to come now I think that's significant in this story because because if you remember it, something happens to him after he's healed from his lameness and he goes on a journey with Peter and John. And so that uh, uh, tells you something a little bit about the significance of the story, maybe. The other thing um, that maybe you noticed as we read through it, but five times, there's just 10 verses to that story. It's not a long story in the Bible, but five times in those 10 verses does it mention either looking or seeing. So there's something really significant in this story of, uh, about looking and seeing. And the last reference to that is at the end of the story where it says, all the people saw him and were filled with awe and wonder. So the story tells us something about Peter and John. It tells us something about access into the presence of God. It also tells us something about seeing. Now, there's some of the things that I noticed as I was reading the story and reflecting on it during this week. But what did you notice? If we go to our Discovery Bible study questions, the first question is, what does this passage tell us about Jesus? And so I simply want to ask you, what does this passage tell you today? What do you see what does God want to point out to you about Jesus? Now, if you're watching this in your family room with other members of your family, uh, maybe you want to share answers with one, one another. What did you notice? What's the most obvious thing that this passage tells us about Jesus? If you're on your own, join in on the chat stream. In fact, if you're with your family, why don't you join in on the chat stream as well? What does this passage tell us about Jesus? So I'm going to have a go and see what I can find. I've got some story, I've got some uh, answers pre-prepared in case this doesn't work, but we will see. There's a good one here from Tony. 
Hi, Tony. You've been joining in the last uh, number of weeks, actually. It's been great to get to know you a little bit online. Uh, but it, Tony's put, Jesus is full of mercy and compassion. Maybe you've been like Trina and struggling over these weeks. And maybe you felt very alone. Maybe what you need to know today is that Jesus has mercy and compassion. And in these moments, he's wanting to touch you afresh with his love and with some of his mercy and compassion. Oh, Tony's on a roll. Jesus specially touches the outcasts and the underprivileged, those that nobody cares. Uh, and it's true. If you look through the gospel stories, you see that Jesus started off with the people that were most overlooked and most in need. Why? Because if you're going to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth, then you want to start with those who are in the greatest need. I know we all have needs in our own way, but actually if you're going to remove the power of hell, you want to start with the most extreme people in, in uh, suffering the greatest, and you want to bring transformation. Uh, Chris the king, that might even be my wife. My wife is tuning in. How good is that, hey? Um, he wasn't too busy going to the temple to stop for someone in need. I wonder how often we've been busy with our own agenda and we've missed the needs of the people around us. Karen at Albany, he uses us. Yes. The Karibas, God will heal anyone. Yes. Martha Bentley, he gives you what you need rather than what you want. That's great. Malcolm, we're his vessels. I'm enjoying this. This is a great way to preach. I don't know why I bothered doing so much preparation in the week. This is great. The porters, Jesus delegates his authority to his disciples. That's right. The levels, Jesus doesn't want anything to come between us and him. Claudia, Jesus had faith in his father, knew he would give him power. Oh, lots here, lots here. Jennifer. Jen didn't Jennifer do such a great preach last week? So Jennifer's mother um, stepped from earth into heaven this week. So it would be a great time to be praying for Jennifer and Tiana and the family. Jennifer's tuning in this morning. Seems his family could only carry him so far. But Jesus is asking us to look directly to him for our healing. Loads of answers, actually. It's, it's encouraging. <laughs> Haley, Jesus sees, really sees everyone, even those on the edges that people don't notice. Lily, hi, Lily. Jesus gives more than we could ever imagine. Jesus will meet you where you are. It's true, isn't it? So many amazing things about Jesus. And maybe you've tuned in today, maybe you've never really encountered the real Jesus. I grew up in a, in a home that never went to church. Um, and I had no real idea about the real Jesus. And it was quite a shock to me when I met someone who was full of life and full of energy and, uh, and uh, seemed like uh, they were living life to the fullness. And then they told me they were a follower of Jesus because I'd never met anybody so full of life. And he preached to me from uh, John chapter 10, verse 10, where Jesus says, I've come in order that you might have life and life it's all, in all its fullness. And my idea of Jesus and the reality of who Jesus uh, really was were miles apart. And I needed someone to sit down and uh, take me through stories like this one in Acts chapter 3 to realize that the real Jesus loves everyone that the real Jesus is particularly concerned for those who are vulnerable and feel overlooked, that the real Jesus wants everyone to have access to come into his presence, that the real Jesus is full of love, that the real Jesus is able to heal, that the real Jesus is able to set free. And you know, when I saw that about the real Jesus, I thought, that's who I want to follow. And I made that decision 37 years ago, and it totally changed my life, but it was the very, very best decision I've ever made. So what does this passage tell us about Jesus? Well, it tells us he's full of love, and he is a healer, and he wants us all to know that we can come close to him. So let's move on to our next uh, question. Our next question is, what does this passage tell me about people or about myself? So what can I learn from this passage about 
uh, people living today, or if I want to personalize it a bit more, what can I learn personally from uh, this passage? And if you've got an answer, if you feel like God's speaking uh, something to you again, feel free to chat about it in your living room. But why don't you put it on the live stream? And if you hurry up and put it on the live stream, then uh, you'll be able to take over the preach again and uh, you'll get your stuff, which is probably way, way better than the stuff that I'd um, prepared. So I'm going to look again and see. Uh, Juliet. Uh, Juliet, thank you for all the encouragement you've been putting on the live stream. At the end of the morning, I often tune into the live stream just to see kind of how it's gone and to see some feedback. And it's been so encouraging, actually, the feedback that you've been giving. And uh, I've really appreciated it. And I know it's not just because half of your family are making the live stream happen uh, either. Um, Juliet puts, I love that they have eye contact the eyes being the window of the soul. And it's true, isn't it? Peter says to the guy, he says, look at me. And he changes what the guy's looking for. Because the guy is looking for silver and gold, thinking that silver and gold is the answer. But actually, what Peter wants to offer him is something much greater, which is what Jesus can do. And so he says to him, he says, look at me. And they lock on eye contact. Do you know, Jesus sees you this morning. And Jesus wants you to be able to look right into his face and see his eyes of love and through that encounter his heart of love. Sue Bailey, Sue, you're not here to shout encouragement onto me, but I'm receiving it today. That the healing is about Jesus, not about me. Did you notice that Peter says to the guy, he, he doesn't say in my name be healed or he doesn't say even in the name of the church be healed. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed. And he points the attention to Jesus. And actually, at the end of this story, uh, if you read on, uh, what you see, the very next thing th that happens is Peter turns and he preaches to the crowd. And he tells them, because of this sign, it was Jesus that you crucified. It was that Jesus who is alive and working through his church. And it's that Jesus who's healed this guy. And one of the reasons I think God has given us the power of his Holy Spirit and he wants us to pray for the sick is because when miracles happen, they're an invitation for people to look up and to see that Jesus is still alive. He's still at work. He's still doing many, many miracles. I'm going to see if I can. Uh, so the healing was about Jesus, not about me. Helen Radmore. Hi, Helen. Giving our full attention to God is worth it. That's so right, isn't it? Do you know, this hour on a Sunday morning is one of the best hours you can ever spend because it's an opportunity to touch God and hear God. And as God works, that can change the whole rest of your week. Muki, the very same power is in us. We need to speak with the same authority. Healing didn't stop in that time. Yeah, this is all the other miracles in the Gospels. Every individual story, it's Jesus speaking. It's Jesus doing the healing. This is the first time some followers of Jesus do the healing. And Jesus said in John chapter 14, he said that he would do greater works through his church than even the miracles we see in Jesus. And this is the first time that uh, uh, two members of the church are being courageous enough, are being bold enough to say, I'm going to take Jesus at his word. I'm going to believe that when he said, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me, now go. I'm going to believe that that Jesus is at work. And I'm going to believe that I have that authority. And on one level, they were risking quite a lot. If you notice, um, it, I think some translations say he took the man by the hand and pulled him up. Actually, literally, it's quite a strong word. And uh, literally, it's he seized him by the hand. And so he literally took hold of him and said, get up. And the guy got up and Jesus healed him. But it took a courage and a boldness to believe. But if that was true for Peter and John, and if Jesus said to the church, then all authority in heaven and earth is given to me, then that must be true also for us today. We have been given authority over sickness and disease. We have been given authority over the works of the enemy. And if we take hold and use that authority, we can see miracles happen through us. The canons that we can show Jesus to people here and now. If ever there was a time that God wants to reveal his love and his compassion to people, it's now. 
And maybe one of the things we should be doing is we should be praying that God gives us uh, daily opportunities to shine his light and to share his love. Esther, the man was expectant you receive, to receive something from them. It's true. The man came to the temple every day expecting he would get help. It's just that on this day, God ramps it up and takes it to a whole new level. And I love the fact that, um, that the church is often the place people turn to when they're in need. Because I think we all have an inner sense that um, there is a God somewhere. And it's in our time of need that we start calling out and crying out to them. Tony uh, need to have more of the Lord as he's more than capable of doing the impossible. He's doing amazing things in our lives in spite of our circumstances. Maybe this morning you're in a situation and it feels impossible. You know, Jesus can make a way where there is no way. Biscuit. Biscuit. Who's Biscuit? Someone. Anyway, tuning in. Hello, Biscuit. I hope you're not just getting crumbs. Boom, boom. Uh, we accept our circumstances and ask for small things to help for coping when we could ask for full restoration. One of the things that really strikes me from this story is the guy comes to the church expecting to get a little, but actually God gives him a lot more. And I wonder whether there's something in this story, something that God wants to do today about raising our faith and raising our expectancy level. Uh, Chris H, the man was there looking for practical for, for support from good people who go to the temple. Ooh, this is going up. We too often look for short-term circumstantial fixes when Father wants to transform us from the inside out. Yeah. The guy didn't need silver and gold. Silver and gold would have helped, actually needed life transformation. How often do we go for the safe option and for the short-term fix when actually we need a bigger thing? I love the fact that Peter speaks the words of life over him, but he doesn't stop there. He also physically pulls him up with a firm hand. It's about us working with God to reach out to love with prayer and practical acts of love. So inspired by Heidi Chow and others in this season. That's from Jennifer. Uh, Regine, the power of Jesus' name. Uh, Anne, I presume that's Anne uh, Reddinghuis. Uh, Jesus wants to befriend you. Miracles are still available to those in need. Ali Hale, the religious people used to walking past him on the way into the temple. The disciples of Jesus stopped and noticed with him and engaged him. They were different from the people around. Faith is embodied in actions. It's good. I'm enjoying this. When I was preparing, I, I, there was one verse in particular that struck me from the passage that I felt that God wanted to do something significant out of this morning. Um, and that's verse six, which is where Peter says, I don't possess silver and gold, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And I felt that God said to me that there's some people today and your focus has been on silver and gold. And maybe that's not surprising, because I know a lot of people's jobs are under threat. You might already have lost your job. I know a lot of people aren't quite sure how they're going to pay the bills in this season. But I just felt that God was saying, silver and gold is not the answer. Jesus is. And if you make Jesus your focus, then Jesus will take care of the silver and gold. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says to us, his disciples. He says, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness and everything else will be added to you. And I just had a sense that in this season that God was saying to some people, don't fear about money, but also don't make money your focus because I'm the God who made the whole world. I'm the God who's able to provide for you. I'm the God who's able to carry you through. And one of the things I noticed in the early books of Acts is that one of the things that often accompanies a release of the supernatural is people uh, uh, generously and wholeheartedly giving. In Acts chapter 2, it says, All those who'd believed were together and had all things in common. They began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all, as anyone might have need. The next thing that happens is we get this story of a miracle. In Acts chapter 4, 
It says, the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul. Not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, but all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and abundant grace was upon them all. And it seems to me that uh, so often, and maybe it's not a surprise because Jesus said we can't serve both God and mammon, it uh, feels to me like Jesus is saying something about let the money go and focus on me and then you'll see my power at work. And I just felt like, I felt like there's at least one person you've tuned in this morning and you're really, really worried about money. And Jesus wants to set you free from that fear and he wants to give you his peace. In fact, I'm going to stop the preach just now. We'll, we'll look at a few more answers in a minute. But I just want to take a moment to pray for you. If, if you are someone and money has really been an issue and fear over money has really been an issue, let's just pause a moment. Maybe you want to put your hand on your heart and I'm going to pray that Jesus will take away your fear for money and that you'll be able to fix your eyes on him and know his peace and his love reaching you. Lord Jesus, thank you in this story. The truth was the guy didn't need silver and gold, he needed you. And what you did in this story was way beyond what he would have got if he'd got a bit of silver and gold. And Father, I just want to repent of where I or where we in this season have made silver and gold our focus instead of you. And Father, right now we repent of focusing on money and we repent of being in fear over money. And Lord, I pray that you will cleanse us, but I bind the power of fear in Jesus' name. And Father, I release your peace right now. Lord, thank you that you're a good father who provides what his children need. And Lord, this morning we make a choice to fix our eyes, not on money, but to fix our eyes on Jesus, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. And we lift you up and we say we trust that you will provide for us and you will carry us through and you will miraculously provide everything that we need. And Lord, I pray that you will hold us right now in your peace and in your love. And I pray that'll be a now experience, but I pray what you do in these moments will last and carry us through the, this week to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Going to read some more stories out. Uh, Jesus is our key to God. With some of us, we experience this love today. It's Nigel. Hope you're doing well. Nigel had an operation on his heart on Thursday. It's great to have you joining in with us today, Nigel. We've been praying for you, praying for God's healing for you. Uh, when he was healed, he demonstrated his worship and thankfulness so that everyone could see him. That's right, Lewis. Uh, said that if you read through you find that uh, when he is healed he then goes into the temple with uh, Peter and John and he goes and he's he's walking and he's leaping and he's jumping up and down and he's praising God he's so amazed with what God's done I don't know how you were in the worship session this morning I know uh, in these uh, days of uh, being limited in terms of bands if you were worried about Nathan his proximity to Michelle Nathan's Michelle's son so he's allowed to be with her it's one household leading us in worship today um, so we haven't got a full band but do you know what that shouldn't be any reason to turn down the volume that shouldn't be any reason to uh, lessen the uh, the passion the fervency of our worship because it's the same Jesus that we worship it's the same uh, power of God that we've experienced uh, at working in our lives what else have we got in terms of answers oh Lily says that was Stephen it was a good answer Stephen uh, Jesus is removing the barriers stopping us from worship we too stop from the rush in our lives and need to stop to reach out to people. Yes, we need to stop for the one person, Rachel. We do. Often that others ignore or choose not to see. So we've looked a little bit about what does the passage tell us about Jesus. We've looked a bit about what can, does the passage tell us about us. Hopefully there's some stuff in this that you're feeling that God is really speaking to you, that you're going to be able to take away and focus on and apply this week. And our last question is, what do we need to do as a response? There's uh, no point just hearing the word of God, as powerful as it is. We need to be people who put the word of God into action. So from what we've heard today, from what God's been speaking, what do you need to do? 
What do you practically need to do as a response? Is there someone this week you need to reach out for because everyone else is overlooking them or ignoring them? Maybe, you're, uh, maybe there's someone you know when they're sick. Maybe God wants you to ring them up and pray over the phone for them and pray for them to be healed. Maybe this morning you're sick and you'd never thought, do you know, today maybe Jesus wants to uh, heal me and set me free. What's the response that you need to make today? Uh, uh, Theodokis, silver and gold would have maintained the disabled man in his disability. God wanted to bring release and healing, not the same old, same old. Chris H, Chris Harding is my guess. Uh, restore Enfield, go. I wonder whether the thing that holds us back is we see Jesus God as an external power and ourselves as his agents if we get things right. It was love that healed this man and we're told that this love, this Christ is in us, in our true identity. Our true self is in him. How much do we choose to love as Christ loves us, to see the Christ in us? I'm going to do two things as a response this morning. For one, I think we need to pray for everyone who's sick. If you're sick this morning, if you're tuning into this alone, I'm going to pray for you in a moment. And uh, the church is going to be praying with me. So there's going to be a number of us asking God for supernatural healing for you. If you're not on your own, if you're a member of a family and you've got other people around you, then I want to encourage you to be praying for one another. My wife, Chris, has got a bad foot. And so, Emma, I want you to pray for mom's foot right now and to pray for healing. And we're going to have a moment where we're going to reach out to God and we're going to ask for his supernatural healing power to come. Now, if it's appropriate, you might want to put uh, your hand on the part of your body that's sick. If it's not, don't worry about it. Like I say, if you're on your own, reach out to God. If you're with a group of people, let's pray for one another. You know, this was Peter and John uh, who were uh, moving in the power of Jesus and taking authority over sickness and seeing the miraculous happen. Let's pray for an outpouring of supernatural healing right now. Lord Jesus, thank you that we know from the Bible that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Father, I uh, choose right now to take authority over every sickness and every disease. Father, I take authority over every mental uh, condition. Father, I take authority over every emotional condition. Father, I take authority over every physical condition. Father, I take authority over every demonic oppression in Jesus' name. And we declare together that the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is stronger than the name of every demon and every disease and every sickness. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we tell you sickness, be gone. And we speak healing and we loose the healing power of Jesus right now into every home, into every life, into every situation, into every circumstance. We prophesy and we release healing in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you're physically praying for someone, you might want to just take a moment and uh, invite the Holy Spirit to come. You might want to ask God whether there's anything particular that he wants you to pray for. Maybe there's a key, there's a revelation that he wants to give. Maybe there's just a blessing he wants you to pray. But just take a moment to listen from good to God. And let's pray and release his healing right now. Right now, right now, right now. And if you're in need of healing, just rest in the presence of Jesus as Michelle plays. Just rest in the presence of Jesus. Invite the Holy Spirit to come and bring healing. Right now, right now, right now right now right now if you're praying in person for someone you want to keep on praying feel free to keep on praying uh, we're going to move on and pray for one more thing and uh, it's the uh, I just want to take a moment for us to pray about compassion I really feel struck the number of people who uh, just wrote in to say God wants us to stop for the one God wants us to see the people no one else sees and I believe God wants to do something in terms of restoring a heart of compassion in his church in his people in these days and so if you're able to why don't you put your hand over your heart to where you think your heart is let's just invite the Holy Spirit 
to come and soften our hearts. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to come and give us compassion that we might not be people who walk past need this week, but we see the ones in need and we reach out to them. Lord Jesus, thank you that you had a heart that saw need and thank you you were always willing to stop for the one. And Lord, I pray that you'll forgive us, Lord, where for some of us we've let our hearts grow cold and we've let our hearts grow hard. Well, for other ones of us, we've just been so busy about our things. We haven't made the time to stop and be busy about your thing. And Father, right now, we want to repent of that and we want to ask, Holy Spirit, will you come and fill us with your compassion right now? Will you come and soften our hearts? Father, may we catch the same heart that you carried. May we have a heart for those that everyone else overlooks. May we have a heart for the uh, isolated. May we have a heart for the disadvantaged. May we be your hands and feet that reach out. May we be the ones that make a difference. And Father, I think in these moments, there's some people that God particularly is wanting to put on our hearts. And so why don't you ask God if there's someone in particular this week that you need to make contact with, you need to reach out to, maybe you need to bless in some way. Father, will you show us, will you speak to us, will you lead us, will you guide us? Father, we want to be a church that looks like you and that acts like you. And Lord, I believe that compassion, I believe that surrender and compassion are keys to seeing the power of God at work. And so, Father, in these moments, we surrender to you and we ask that you'll clothe us with your compassion, that we might be your channels, your vessels to see your power at work and to see your power bring change. In Jesus' name, amen.